Welcome. Let's go over the basics of a two wire pulse width modulated idle valve on Mega Squirt. This is the most rudimentary, simple type of idle control that you can do on a motor that doesn't have a drive by wire throttle body. In this case, the subject we're looking at today, this one is going to be one of the easiest to find, especially finding used, but this Bosch ending in 516, it says 0208 This particular idle valve is one that I'm familiar with and really easy to use. And a lot of older engines use this style valve. And so the hoses that go from the intake manifold and so on will all be very similar. So you can see the connections here. They are right around a uh, three quarter inch hose and you can get different types of like heater hose and things and place these in different parts of the engine bay uh, into your uh, air box and intercooler piping and different things like that so this is one that i would suggest you can find them used on ebay i would definitely try and look for them secondhand or if you have a junkyard close to you you can pick them up for pennies on the dollar if you're trying to purchase them new watch out uh, they are fairly expensive. Uh, you can pay 150 to 200 US dollars or more, depending on where you get them. Now, the key feature to this style valve is that it is a solenoid. It has two wires and you can pulse with it. You can make it open and close at a certain rate to control the flow. Whereas some of the newer style valves, they are usually three wire or more and they are controlled by a stepper motor and a lot of older ECUs and older cars uh, they didn't use stepper motors it was something that they added later in different control uh, strategies um, in the 90s and you'll find those typically in a little bit newer cars but it's not always necessarily that way so a lot of these PWM valves were in the mid 80s early 80s and 70s, but uh, like this one, for example, is very typical in classic BMWs, and it is actually a stepper motor. So you have to be careful and try to look at the connector down at the bottom uh, to see what, uh, how many pins it has. If it's a two pin, it's almost a guarantee that that style is going to uh, be a solenoid type. And that's what we're looking for, just two pins at the bottom. Typically, like these ones, they use a Bosch EV1 style connector and uh, you can find them yeah kind of all over looking in junkyards and if you back search you can find different Volvo models BMW Saabs that use this style valve and uh, just give it a little bit of a searching there's also a lot of resources if you type in like mega squirt idle control valve there's a lot of different forum posts on which ones of these to use and those are also a good way to figure out some of the ingredients we need to make this work now i stumbled upon this on haltech's website they have a nice info sheet that we can we can open up and it will tell you the settings to use for this particular idle valve so this is a good this is a good baseline for this particular valve. So when you have a solenoid, it has you have to set a frequency of how many times you're pulsing it per second, which is in hertz, the recommended frequency, and then what duty cycle is the minimum. Now, most solenoids don't, you, it's not zero to 100. Their actual working range is more like 25 to 75 or, 35 to 80 somewhere in there not usually 0 to 100 they they take a certain amount of energy to get them open and to hold them open or closed and there's usually a workable range in between that you'll be that you'll be using and so that is why you need these now we'll jump back over to the software in tuner studio here for a mega squirt 2 for example or a micro squirt that uses mega squirt 2 and I'll show you how to do this. So up at the top here, we've got these tabs. You want to go to start up and idle and go down to idle control. The first thing we need to do is enable it in the software. So if you click on this drop down and go over to PWM valve, two wire or three wire, this is the one we're going to use. We're going to use open loop 
uh, as the algorithm that is the most basic it doesn't take in any external inputs to make a decision on how to make the engine run and for someone just getting into this that wants to have a good idle and just base it off of temperature for when it gets really cold this is one of the easiest ways to set it up that you don't really have to uh, put a ton of effort into all the little tiny specifics it's just setting up a, a table that i'll show you in a second to make this work so you'll set that and then over on the right you'll see a few parameters here that we need to set so the first one is the valve frequency in tuner studio they don't actually give you the hundred hertz um, but you can try 92 or 124 in this case i have used this exact same valve right here and the 92 seems to work really well so you can try that it doesn't really hurt too much to go between a couple and see which one works the best but try to find if you if you have known good information like this um, just try to use what's there so we'll go for the 92 and i've personally tested this so uh, 92 will work. The next thing you need to do is just choose which output on the mega squirt you're using. Most of the time, there is a dedicated wire coming out from the mega squirt that is called F idle, and that is the one that you want to use. So the actual idle control. Now that wire is grounding the solenoid. So the only other wire on a two wire system that you need uh, right here is power. You can see right here it says circuit A is power and circuit B is the ECU. So you need a fuse going to that, a fused uh, circuit. You could try three or five amps. I've, uh, one amp is a little bit too low. I've tried that with this um, and blown the fuse. So probably around the three amp fuse going to this circuit. So a switched, usually with your ECU, when your ECU turns on, uh, as you're going to be starting and running it, um, it needs a three amp or five amp fuse going to one side, and then the other side goes to the ECU, which in our case on the Mega Squirt is F idle. So it's really that simple. It is literally two wires to hook this up, and then you need to hook up the hoses to the intake and your air box or intercooler piping, depending on how you have it set up. But typically, there's already provisions on a lot of older engines for where this should go. We're just worrying about more about where you can control it since there's so many different variations. Uh, the next thing we can look at is run valve before start. You can choose whether or not to have that on or off. Basically, it just helps potentially giving a little more air if it's just open and right before you start. You can try messing with this on and off. I've actually found that it's not particularly important because usually the uh, right when you start cranking it opens up and it fires right up and i haven't really had any issues with that and then typically valve modes uh zero percent on the percentage is going to be off and that does change sometimes uh, depending on what brand the valve is it, and how they've set it up it could be it could be inverse of that and you can actually you can flip that to inverted but we'll just leave it for zero for now so once you've hit uh, all those boxes, we're actually ready to rock. We just need to now go into start up and idle. And as you can see, they're not grayed out anymore, these cranking and warm up duty steps. So we're going to go first over to the idle warm up uh, duty cycle and just start here. My suggestion in this case, since a lot of the times the idle stepper motors, or sorry, the idle solenoids will work between 20 and 80 percent i would just take all of the values for the idle control and just set them to 40 percent so just set it straight across at 40. now this isn't where we're going to end up but this is how you would try to get a good start so now that you're you have this enabled you have it wired in all the hoses hooked up and you have it powered go ahead and start your engine and Typically at this point, it's gonna rev up, depending on the size of the motor and the, the fueling that you have, it, it may range from 1,000 to 1,500 or 2,000 RPMs. At some point, you're gonna, you're gonna see it get more air than it's used to if you're doing this for the first time or, or going from not having a, an idle valve set up 
and from here you'll just adjust it uh, you'll just adjust it so you'll turn it on have this in here and then you can actively set this to different percentages to like 50 percent and i would just move the entire graph up and down until you get an idle where you want so say you're starting the the vehicle and it's 40 degrees fahrenheit outside so it's nice and chilly uh, just get the idle to where you want so maybe a thousand rpms so on a cold start it's not uncommon to have 1100 rpms or 1200 or thousand somewhere there above your typical idle uh, depending on your motor that could be vastly different but maybe 1100 rpms so try and get this duty to where it would be about 1100 rpms let's say that 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 is at 60 percent so once we get the value to 60 percent um, at that particular temperature you can work on the temperatures as the motor warms up and that's one benefit as the motor's running that the motor will be going along this axis in uh, towards this warm spot up here up towards the the fully warm zone at about 160 degrees so as the motor is warming up you can change th these points and they just correspond to the numbers over here on this input on the right and you can decide kind of what percentage you need to get your specific target rpm now don't be afraid to mess with this really all it's going to do is change the idle of the engine you might go from 2000 rpms down to 700 or 500 rpms just changing this around but what's nice about this is you can just do this parked you're not there's nothing really that you have to worry about uh, other than just being in a in a open place where you can sit on your laptop and try to adjust this and you can go back and continually change this as you uh, find the right combination of numbers to make your engine idle to where it needs to be it it sounds a little bit overly simplified but it really is quite simple that once you get this set it's pretty easy sometimes you'll come in here and set it at 50 maybe it's 32 degrees outside you can even set a point you can drag these over and set them to 32 degrees or you can come over here and just set 32 and then like 50 different different points here and as the motor is warming up you can change the idle by dragging these up or down in how much percentage duty cycle you have on your idle valve and finding a spot where it finally idles and runs nice and smooth so typically this last point you would just leave it somewhere flat and that would be a consistent idle for your your warm running range so like 170 160 up to 220 250 somewhere in there so i hope this helps it's a lot easier than i think some people think it is and i wanted to just show truly how simple it is really it's just getting that valve installed correctly and set up in tuner studio and then you come in here and you can change these values until you find exactly where the motor runs happiest at certain temperatures and then uh, don't be afraid to really change these i mean the motor if you want that idle valve shut depending on you know your motor combination it might want to be at a hundred percent it might want to be at eighty percent uh Kind of every valve and scenario and how much vacuum your motor pulls is probably going to be a little bit different so feel free to come in here and just adjust it as the motor is warming up do that a few times and you will have it nailed down so thanks for watching i hope this helped some of you it's really truly simple and with the winter season coming up i hope this helps some of you get your projects running nice and smooth i know this is a uh, getting your motor to run when it's cold is quality of life that is really nice on a project car uh, quality of life upgrade and I, I like to uh, try to get my cars to run as as best as possible regardless of the temperature so if you enjoyed this please consider uh, liking sharing and subscribing and becoming a member it all helps the channel grow and we'll get more content like this soon thank you